typical day, um, the most typical thing is clocking in. After that, it's it varies from, from what time it is. Um, typically, we get our, our car accidents, everything like that in the early afternoon. Uh, as the day progresses, it starts to turn into um, disturbances, intoxicated persons, um, car accidents, and then it later on in the evening, it just kind of tapers down. Um, the higher priority calls start coming in as, as the day goes on. I'd say there's really no typical day. Any day, depending on, say, weather, how many dispatchers we have, or the shift of officers, you just really can't say it's always going to be a typical day. There may be some high emergency call that comes in that takes up a good part of my day, and I spend most of my time doing that before I know it. It's 11 o'clock, and then it's 12, and then I have two hours left, and then 10 minutes left, and my shift is done. There really is no typical day. All, all kinds of things happen every day. <laughs> I work Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, sometimes Linda will come in earlier, sometimes Linda will come in later, but I typically work 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. I work from uh, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, and typically that's, that's very, really set in stone unless we have a high priority, priority incident. Um, usually if you know, we're working with somebody that's giving us a lot of information with you know, maybe a, a barricaded suspect or a suicidal person, we can work uh, work over the time because we've built a relationship with that person and we don't want to sever that and possibly lose progress or or even a worse situation where they they may decide to desk like the situation. We do get holidays so if they fall on my days off then I would get holiday pay for it or if it's a day that I work I will put in for holiday to request it off and usually another coworker will sign up for it so I can have the holiday off if not then I do have to work the holidays but I knew from the beginning when I was interviewed that that was going to be a possibility. I, yeah, I don't think people think about those things until they call us and realize that we are there. We're always there. We never close. Someone will always answer the phone or the radio. We rotate desk, so you don't ever get stuck working the same radio or position in dispatch for eight hours straight. It's just to break it up so if one radio is really busy, then the next radio that you rotate to may not be quite as busy. You may get a little bit of break to do other things, like maybe get something to eat, do paperwork. We'll switch positions either every two hours or every two hours and 40 minutes. So we're working on each station, whether it be fire, um, police B channel, or, or the main police A channel. If you have somebody training, they'll, they'll have to go to separate places and do their training, and so you just have to accommodate for them. One person won't be stuck on phones all day, which you know, can drag on and one person won't be stuck on radios, which is just constant stress with the officer safety and, and telling everyone where to go. So we try to keep everyone fresh. I think um, one of the main things that I, I would like for someone to know is that um, we really assist in cracking some of these cases. You know, the officers may be out there and they're, you know, talking to people, working on it. At the same time, we're doing our digging back in dispatch and, you know, we may find the person that they're looking for. So we really assist in a lot of those things. So I think a lot of the times people don't realize that whenever I'm talking to them on the phone, I'll also be on the radio. Um, and so they won't, I'll, I'll say, hold on a moment, or you're going to hear some silence and they'll think that I will have disconnected, but really I'll be on the radio. And so they, they kind of get worried, but I'll be like, no, no, I'm still here, just give me one moment. And that, that seems kind of like the, the biggest thing that people just don't realize. We update the records in the city. Uh, we tell every business out there every year. You know, we, every month we're working through a couple hundred businesses. You know, we just call them. It's like, hey, who's the best person to call them? You know, if there's a fire, if there's a break in. Well, I don't want them to get the impression that all I do is sit there and wait for the phone or the radio to go off because that's not true. We have paperwork that we get assigned. Some dispatchers keep track of our 911 statistics, how many calls come in a day, and then they tally it up to how many calls come in a month. We also do different quality assurance things with um, entries into the national computer system, entries into our CAD system, which is our computer-aided dispatch system. If you are on the phone and you have other phones ringing, you can't just let them ring. So, you know, we have to 
um, obtain whether or not this other call that we need to answer is an emergency. If it's not an emergency, then we'll ask them to um, you know, be placed on hold while we finish the other call. And if the, if the second call we answer is more important, then we'll just prioritize. If it is an emergency, then we'll get that call entered. So all about prioritizing at that point. It's pretty hard. <laughs> it's pretty hard sometimes. Um, a lot of, you just have to put people on hold, unfortunately, and have to go the most emergent calls first. And then if you don't have an emergency, you might just have to wait for a little bit while we handle the people that are really in danger. Well, what we do is all of the dispatchers in the room, no matter what radio system they're at, we all contribute to answering non-emergency phone lines and emergency lines. So if the phone rings, one of the dispatchers in the room is going to get it. It's not one job for one single dispatcher. And as far as emergency response to the call loads, whatever officers are closest to the calls, they get assigned those high priority emergency calls first. The fire department's the same way. We use a proximity dispatch. So if they're the closest fire unit to that fire emergency call, they get sent first. And if it's things that may be outside of our jurisdiction or say on I-49, we can call other outside police agencies that we have good working relationships with and ask them for assistance. Or if they're the ones with the heavy workload, even offer our assistance, police or fire. So it depends on if you are calling from a landline or calling from a cell phone. If you're calling from a landline, it automatically gives your location. And so we are able to see the phone number and the address. So if you know someone called and hung up, we would have an address to go to. Um, if it's a cell phone, it's a little different. It plots off of the closest tower that you're near. Um, and depending on how long you stay on the phone, um, you know, we get a better accurate location most generally. Let's say you call 911, I'll answer Fayetteville 911, and then People will usually tell you, like, I need help, or what's going, like, they'll tell you what's going on, and so then I'll ask, where are you? The most important thing I want to get from you first is your location. That is so crucial. Most people will forget where they're at in emergencies, or they'll get so excitable, they'll blurt it out, and then they'll hang up. Say you call 911 with an accident, and maybe you don't know where you are. We can ask, what, what do you see around you, you know? And that's one of the things we're knowing the city and, you know, the geography of the city is very important in the job. That way we can just get help to somebody faster. So if somebody told me that they were at an intersection and they could see, um, you know, at a stoplight and could see Whole Foods, you know, then I'm going to know where that's at. They might not know that they're at, you know, intersection of college just south of Millsap, but I know that. So it's very important to know the geography. We um, are very close in dispatch, so we, we can tell if somebody, you know, if a call has bothered them, you know, we'll try to check on them, say, hey, do you need a, you know, a couple minutes to, you know, get up and walk around, go outside, take a breather, um, you know, depending on the call volume, you know, we try to see if somebody needs that, you know, sometimes all you need to do is get up and walk away and, you know, then kind of regroup and come back in and take the next call. But it's very stressful, so we try to really look out for each other in that sense, um, just to make sure that everybody's, you know, dealing with the stress will. You just have to be calm and take every like every call at a time because you'll take one call that's really like high intensity, high energy, like people are just yelling at you, like you're just trying to get everything as best as you can. And then the next one, you know, might not be like that. So you just have to take every call as it comes. That's <laughs> that's the question right there. The situation itself trying to keep the center from becoming a negative place is is talking to you the people around you. It's like realizing that everyone around you has taken that same type of call. They've talked to that same type of person, whether they're someone crying on the line or someone that's blaming you for what's going on. Everyone around you's had that, so that's that's the first step. Is you know not not just keeping it on your own shoulders. I have a really good working relationship with my coworkers. They're great people, the dispatchers, the police officers, and the firefighters. So. I just try to take time to catch up with my coworkers, see how their days go in, have a chat, and I try to find the good in everything, try to find something positive throughout the day, or even something just to give me a little laugh and keep me going. And I try to look at things as positively as I can. Don't let the bad get me down. For the police officers that I work with, the firefighters, the other outside agencies, the citizens at large, my other city co-workers. Thank you for believing in us at CDC. Thank you for always supporting us and 
the work we do. I love my job. The city's an amazing place to work and I'm just so glad that we have the support of everyone and I would just like to say thank you. Yeah, it's a really fun job. <laughs> it's really crazy. It's really crazy, but it's a lot of fun.